undoubtedly what motivates Waverley is the realisation that his life would have been so very different if it wasn't for a teacher named Rosemary Bishop all those years ago. I helped Waverley get a better education. He just had something special about him and I just wanted to give him the opportunity to reach his goal. I guess the outcome is like ripples in a pond. And it's incredible to think those ripples in a pond are still spreading out and will continue to. I remember, you know, Mrs Bishop said for me, you know, when I went to boarding school, you know, I just opened the door for you. And I suppose she has handed on the baton to me to help other Indigenous children around Australia. <laughs> Yallery wouldn't exist without Wavy and I, but I don't think Wavy and I would exist without Yallery. Yallery has helped us. There's nothing like having a joint purpose for people. To our graduating class of 2017, we are sincerely proud of you. You are my inspiration each and every day. <laughs> I know it sounds cliche, but Waverley and Lou, they operate with love. <laughs> Uh, spills out into all people that they interact with. There's no black and white in, in my eyes, even though we, we come from different backgrounds. It's just a love story that two people coming together with a, a united goal to make a difference, and I believe we are. student on our program, we visit the families, we interview the children. What we're offering young Indigenous children from country towns is a once in a lifetime opportunity to attend some of the best private schools. And the thing that we are looking for the most is not found in the dictionary and I call it stickability. Are you Kevin? I'm Waverley. How are you? You've been... I'm this Lou. Is Lou. This is my wife Lou. Yeah, nice to meet you. It is the resilience for a child to be able to stick it out when the times get tough. So you think you'd be able to, 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 be able to start in Year 7 and finish in Year 12 if we would offer you a scholarship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so There's a spark, really, really you can see. Thinking, oh. They don't have to be an A student, uh, but they have to be able to manage. So why do you want to finish Year 12 for then? To get a better education, get a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thing that strikes me, and I think it strikes most people when they meet Lou and Waverley, is they not only know the names of every child, they know the names of every nan, every mum, every dad, often the sisters and the cousins. I'd like to offer you a scholarship at Tombo Grammar School. Hooray! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, good. And so... They become part of his family, and him and Lou are essentially their surrogate parents. You know, and there's 200 plus of them now, dotted around Australia. So this is my classroom here then. I attended Mergen State Primary School in Queensland, 300 kilometres northwest of Brisbane. My three younger brothers, three younger sisters, we all did our primary school here, and there's a big indigenous flavour here within Mergen State School. I assumed that I was going to be going to Mergen State High School and I know for certain that we couldn't afford private school fees. I was Waverley's teacher in Grade 7. Now all the kids loved him, all the teachers did. I wanted something better for Waverley, so I wrote to the principal of Toowoomba Grammar and asked him could he have some help for me to find a scholarship for Waverley to go on to better education. He brought a letter home from Mrs Bishop and John and I both thought, oh, jeez, what has Waverley been up to, you know? Has he been naughty? Did he do something wrong? When Mum and Dad came home and told me that Mrs Bishop wanted to have an interview about me going to boarding school, I said no. Because, well, I've only been away from home once. I knew nothing about Toowoomba Grammar School at all. I didn't even know Toowoomba even existed. 
A week later, I was accepted as a boarder. And uh, the most loneliest time in my life for me was getting dropped off at Groom House. Yeah, I was, felt like a, like a like a fish out of water, well and truly, you know. And um, and this was going to be my life for the next five years. I can't imagine what it would have been like for Waverley to be to be brutally honest. He was pretty much the only dark face amongst the sea of white kids. Not an easy setting to come into. Most people from the land were reasonably prejudiced towards Aboriginal people. Of course, you know, he used to cry, he wanted to come home, and we, you know, we just told him that, you know, just hang in there, that, you know, that things are going to turn out better yet. Right, then, boys, this is, this is Groom House. This is where I started here in year eight, 1980. It was a, uh, my first time away from home. I was homesick for the first two weeks here. I didn't, I didn't want to fail. But the thing was, you know, we were all homesick, so... I wanted to set an example. We looked after each other. After a while, oh, I absolutely loved it. I absolutely enjoyed my, my time from 1980 to 84. Sport was a big part for me, so I was captain in my final year. I was captain of the second 15. I think the biggest, biggest change for me, I think, was that, you know, anything is possible. I couldn't, couldn't see over the top of this, these cubicles, whereas now I can. <laughs> Waverley was the first Aboriginal kid to go from grade 8 to grade 12 to finish Toowoomba Grammar. It was a, an education, I suppose, for a lot of kids to see this little black kid excelling and the realisation that it um, didn't matter whether you're black, white or brindle. So in my final three or four weeks prior to finishing Toowoomba Grammar School, I wrote a letter thanking Mrs Bishop for the opportunity she, was, she gave me. The letter was just so touching. I kept it all these years. 6th of 11th, 84. Dear Mrs Bishop, this letter is coming from my heart and I'm so happy and glad that I had you for a teacher and friend. Your contribution to what you did in my life will always stay with me. I just opened a door for him and he went through that door and he's done all the work and it takes a really special boy to do that. I always wanted to be a teacher, but my TU school wasn't the best. So I, um, I come home, worked in the meatworks in Mergen for nine months. I did a public service exam and I worked at the Australian Taxation Office as a public servant. And then in 2000, I started my own business, started a coffee shop. I was, I was a father at 20, married at 21, four children. You know, we, we separated Dorothy and I, but, you know, never regret having being a father at such a young age, and it, it makes me who I am now, too. I was a little blonde girl, brought up on the northern beaches of Sydney. When I finished high school, I went nursing for a short period, but I, I was a musician as well. I just loved writing music. That was my passion. And so I formed my own band and fronted the band. Did that for quite a few years. I know why I don't see you. I was a reluctant performer. If I could have sat in the corner and written music and given it to other people, I would have been very happy. So I knew there was something else for me, something else for me to do. In my 30s, I started working volunteer with Lifeline as a telephone counsellor. So tell me about when you visited your mother. Funnily enough, the role at Lifeline led to a job at a company called First Australians Business, which helps Aboriginal people set up small businesses. And that's where I met Waverley, because he was one of their presenters. She listened more than she talked, and she made you feel comfortable. She was, she was special, I, I could understand that. She had a sincerity and a, a warmth and friendliness. <laughs> he laughed a lot, I remember that part. And he was really warm and engaging. I didn't think you liked me at first. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know what it was. I don't know what it was, I was uh, 
You were nervous. You were shy. Oh, I had the, yeah, I had that, uh, you know, that 16-year-old nervousness, I think. For a long time, we were just friends, good friends. Oh, and my jolly word, it was quite a while before I did, you know, put any moves on or anything like that. I wanted to get it right, you know. And it's going, going, gone. And one afternoon he said to me, would you like to come with me to a information evening about walking the Kokoda track? I thought, oh. <laughs> Is this a date or not? I don't really know. And then I go down to the car park and the car wouldn't start. Yeah, that was really good and then... I don't know. Then it took a few more months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a few. A few more months till we had another attempt at a date. We were just having dinner and finally he had the courage to hold my hand. I thought, oh, okay, this is probably a date now. And then the night ended with a kiss, so it was a date. <laughs> and then, then we were together. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want to cook? We did talk about having children, but you know, we were 38 when we got together, so. That's a right dad, eh? It didn't happen, and we just went on with our life. That doesn't work in doggy language. Yes, you just. I'm the third child, he's third child. We didn't treat Lou very well when we were younger. We were little rat bags. We'd just ignore her, or I don't know, just be. I don't know, we just wouldn't listen to her. It was a real snake just looking up at her. Oh, my God. And when I was going boarding school, Lou and I got closer. <laughs> now Lou is like, you know, like a second mum. We can get them finished in the next couple of weeks. So it wasn't long after we got together that Wavy thought we should start a business together. And it's a fundraising then. One was, uh, oh, let's do a mountain bike riding business. I had no interest in that. He said, what about lawn mowing? We could mow people's lawns. I said, no, no. Then I came up with the idea of a business providing scholarships for Indigenous children to go to boarding schools, just like myself. Make some recommendations, just like what Mrs Bishop did for me. Mm. And he looked at me, he said, well, how do we do that? I said, I've got no idea, but I think that's needed. Let's see what we can do. But first of all, we've got to get the, get the schools on board. Mm. We named it Yallery which means child in Birigaba language. Getting permission from Mrs Bishop, first of all, to see if I could uh, uh, name a scholarship in her honour. That was the first phone call I had. And my reaction to that was, I cried. <laughs> and I was so touched and I told him that and I said, of course you can, Waverley, I think that's a wonderful thing. He and Lou had started from their garage with their credit card. As anyone who's grown an organisation will tell you, it's never smooth sailing. These are the ones here that need... We would sometimes do our work all day in pyjamas and he'd be out talking and I'd be doing the administration behind the scenes. We started planning and talking how we were going to raise money. We started making phone calls to schools. It very much matched what we wanted to do. We can't select students ourselves and go out to all communities. So Waverley and Lou, they meet the families and then they make recommendations to us and say, look, these young people could be a good fit. I grew up on Thursday Island, so I attended primary school there. There aren't too many options available when you're in high school on Thursday Island just due to the fact of how small it is. So I sat down after school and I wrote my application and I applied for Yallery myself. She was exactly what we were looking for in regards to the, the young people that we want on our scholarship program. Their resilience, their confidence, their courage, and a very, very supportive mother. When I found out I was accepted into Yallery, my mom couldn't hold back the tears of joys in her eyes. She was truly just grateful and so was I. Just look at the words first. Once we look at the words, we're going to then have to decide how we're doing it. I was lucky enough to be given the opportunity to come to St Margaret's Anglican Girls' School mm -hmm. in Brisbane. <laughs> I'm currently finishing Year 12 now. I know it's changed my life.
Growing up, I thought that I'd live in Cairns, maybe work at the movies, you know? I'm currently looking at doing a Bachelor of Communications and hopefully within that, media, advertising, maybe even possibly journalism. And what about you then, miss? I've just been applying to universities now, so I'm looking at QUT, UQ and Bond and all that. Yeah, well, we need a marketing manager at Yellowy, though. I'll be there, see you mm. in 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There are about 14 girls here on Yallery. So what we do is we do for walk from Woodford to Shubik, so... Waverley and Lou are more than just the founders of Yallery. They're your family, your mother and father that are guiding you through boarding school. To our, our graduating class this year of 2017, there's 21 of you here. You are by far the most important children here today. I treat them like my children and I'll growl at them when I need to. I'll praise them when I need to. And I have a high expectation of every Yallery student because it's no use them getting a deadliest education at these boarding schools and doing nothing with it. Waste of time, waste of money, waste of effort. OK, and from St Margaret's, John Day and Martin. He can't afford to be seen to fail because there's so much riding on this for him. And I know that at one stage, Waverley said to me, he said, you know, well, we've had a couple of people, you know, drop out and he was worried that, that that would reflect badly on the organisation. Maybe when you come back from holidays, bring something from home with you. One of the girls said to me quite clearly, I don't fit in at home anymore, I don't really fit in at school. The only time I fit in is when I'm with Yallery, with the other kids doing things together. It works, yeah. Other kids have done it. And that was very confronting for me because I thought, oh, is this, this is... This is not really good. Where do these children fit in in life? They'll be all right, you know. I've heard that some people have accused him of a, of a modern-day stolen generation because you're taking kids out of their environment and away from their home and putting them into another environment. A few of the critics might have just said that we've, we've been picking the, the cream of the crop out of the communities and we're, we're taking the, some of the young leaders out of the communities. I'm not really interested in that. I'm just focused on ensuring that the children that we are looking after give them a good education, support them along the way. Sometimes I feel like I have 300 children. During holidays or weekends, there's often children at our house and that's okay. No questions asked. If you don't want to go home for the holidays, you can come and stay here, that's fine. One of those children was Laurie. I reckon one of the best paintings that I did was probably the one I did for you for Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. And Waverley's birthday. Them two are probably one of my favourites that I've done. She was in year nine and she'd been here for a week and then she was supposed to be going back to her foster carer. I mean, I, like, I remember the painting we went when we went over on the year nine camp to NT. Mm -hmm. We went to Papania, I think it was. The way I grew up uh, was all over the place, had a lot of family drama. You weren't even painting at that stage, were you? Yeah, I ended up in foster care, just went from foster carer to foster carer. And I got a phone call from Docs and said, well, she can't go back there. Oh, no, they've given her room away to some other child that needed it. I was horrified. I, I couldn't... Horrified for her. And I remember saying to Lou, you know, we just need to give this young lady an opportunity of just having some stability in her life. And from there, we just said, we'll play a mother and father role with her, and, and we have. Yeah, that's plenty. That's perfect. They took me in when I was in year nine, so it's been about six years now since I've been a part of the Stanley mob. <laughs> Probably. There's a lot of love. You can definitely see it. Then goes breakfast, you know, drink a water and look around. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> I do think about where I would be if I didn't apply for Yallery, didn't go boarding school. I think about it all the time. You know, and I know that I wouldn't be in a good state, you know, I'd just be, you know, non-educated and, you know, not doing anything with my life. I'm here today at Parachute with the rest of my Yallery grade. It's really good, like, being here and stuff, because we only get to see each other once a year and this is our last time being together as a cohort. Perfect. All right, now try to get the ball onto my foot again. There you go. Right now we've got 27 schools around Australia with Yallery students in their secondary years. 
We've got 172 right now in the program. That's it. Yallery is funded by a combination of the government, corporates, individuals and philanthropic foundations. Our first batch of children that started in 2006, you know, they're all graduated now and starting uni or finishing uni and also in employment. That's a wonderful thing to see. I've been in education for over 30 odd years. I find this probably the most enriching educational thing that I've done and I've done some fantastic things. There's something very, very powerful about uh, the program, about Waverley, about Lou. Many a time I've nearly been, well, I'm not nearly, I've been brought to tears. It's not easy and no one ever said it would be and this isn't a Pollyanna solution where you attend a school for six years and suddenly the world opens up for you. But hopefully what we've created is belief, empowerment and the ability to take yourself forward and keep fighting. Good morning, everybody. How are you, is all right? Busy or what? I'm a big vision person. Morning, Rakesha. How are you, darling? Good Lose morning, the, the nitty gritty, get the stuff done. Now, my queen, I've got an idea. And I think it does work together because we complement each other, just like, you know, chalk and cheese or black and white. We then have them coming for, say, five to seven days, knowing that people are very, very time poor. It's almost like I don't see Wavy and I as black and white until I look at somebody else. And then I realise that that's us too. When I walk with him, we stand out. He notices that, but I don't. We tried to get married earlier and then um, that didn't work. We just ran out of time when we set up Yallery. In 2009, we went off on a holiday to drive across America. We're driving along and I said to him, do you think you can really get married in Vegas like they do in the movies with about half an hour's notice? I rang up to the Las Vegas Hilton and I said, oh, I said, mate, do you have a chapel there? And he said, yes, sir, we do. Went to a little chapel at um, five o'clock in the afternoon. One drunken Irishman took a photo of us. And then, uh, then we got married. I'm grateful that I took my time with her because, you know, we've been married for eight years and we've been together for 13. And I've had a, an amazing time with her. It's all about you, isn't it? All about Lou. Yes, yes, that's right, my brookie gear. However long I've known Waverley, I always thought, isn't it great? He's not another angry Aboriginal man out there. But the truth is, and I've only realised this recently, he is another angry Aboriginal man because any form of injustice sends him to his hothead state. So earlier this year we, we received a phone call uh, at Yallery from the Prime Minister and Cabinet Office asking us for if we could use a million dollars as part of the 50th anniversary celebrations for the um, 1967 referendum. Could we have used $1 million? My jolly word, we could. Then the next day, we found out that there was actually $138 million coming through. For Waverley, there was a, uh, an offer of a grant that was perceived to have been um, far less than was offered to non-Indigenous organisations who were supporting Indigenous children. This isn't fair. And I felt that we, as an Indigenous-led organisation, weren't being acknowledged for the work that we were doing. I refuse to be put to the back of the line. So we took ourselves out of the line. So we decided to give the money back. As it turned out, I think there was some misinterpretation of that, but we'll use that as the catalyst for a relationship with government uh, into the future and take a positive from it. But for Waverley, it was very personal. A hundred and twelve years ago, my great-grandmother Nan Nelly Thomas was forcibly marched from Woodford to Sherbrooke with a, a number of other Indigenous people at that time from Durandu, which was the Aboriginal community at Woodford. So every two years, we have a commemorative walk to Sherbrooke. I look at it as walking in the footsteps of our giants that have gone before us. We've got photos of my Nan. She was still alive when I was growing up and still at Twombo Grammar School and passed away when I was 21. She never read and write, her signature was a thumbprint. 
Waverley always tells us at each camp, you know, the only difference between us and other Indigenous people from the past is education, and we're given that opportunity to make a difference through education. We've been walking for five days now, so we're almost completed our 100k walk. We've just got 15 more to go, and then we'll be done. When Waverley arrives with his children, I'll be there to greet him. And it's going to be a wonderful surprise for him. Oh, Mrs. Bishop. Oh, how are you, Rod? Oh, this is beautiful. Oh. I love the way he's, he still calls her Mrs. Bishop. And she often says to him, Waverley, it's about time you call me Rosemary. He says, I don't think so, Mrs. Bishop. <laughs> Well, I'm just so proud of him and just proud of what he's done and proud of the children. Um, this is my grade seven teacher, Mrs. Rosemary Bishop, and all you young people that are standing here right now. So this is the lady that, the scholarship that you, that is named in her honor. So every single person here, this is the lady that started gallery. For it's me like back in 1980, and when she said, you just opened the door and she's opened the door for all the use, okay? So this is one of the most special ladies in my life.